Hola a todos, what is up? Today is gonna be um, a bit of a different video than what I do normally. It's kind of more like the videos I did in college where I did political commentary, but um, this has been a video that I have, forgive me, I'm putting on my watch. This is a video that I have been putting off doing for a while because I did not want to have to deal with the backlash. I didn't want to have to deal with people going off um, to me in the comments or spamming me or whatever the fuck but it's been something that's been on my mind for a while and today i felt really fucking called to talk about it so let's talk about why i no longer use palo santo or sage in my spiritual practice Before I dive into all of that stuff, I'm gonna just put the disclaimer in, even though people really don't listen to the disclaimer. This is my personal opinion. This is my personal truth. This is in no way me criticizing or admonishing anybody else for using smudge or use smudging or using Palo Santo. It's merely me sharing why I stopped because of information I gained. Um, so that being said, if you watch this and you're like, I'm gonna keep fucking smudging, I don't give a fuck what that girl say okay like i ain't gonna take it personally it's not gonna it's not gonna affect me my they ain't gonna affect my day to day right and so this again like i said it's just me sharing knowledge and encouraging other people to do their own research i also want to include who i am i am a dominican anti-racist raja yoga teacher i am a brown woman in america who is learning an ancient indian spiritual practice and I honor that and I recognize that. I honor and recognize that I am an immigrant and I honor and recognize that I am a human and I am just trying my best. I am not indigenous. I have not been trained or have had, unfortunately not yet, the pleasure of being able to learn from an indigenous healer. And so these are my opinions, that's it. I can only say that this is the right path for me. I don't know what your path looks like. I'm not here to tell you what your path is supposed to look like. I'm really just here sharing my truth and living my truth as it stands today in December, 2020. That might change. So <laughs> where am I gonna start? <sighs> Let's begin with the American Indian Religious Act. Smudging is obviously, or maybe not obviously, if you didn't know, smudging is a very important cleansing spiritual ritual or practice that uh, indigenous and native or indigenous slash Native American tribes used. Um, it is a process where a person can be cleansed of negative energy or negative thoughts about a person or a place. And Native Americans were not allowed to practice. They were not allowed to practice their spiritual faith uh, until 1978 with the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. And that was in 1972. Today, as it stands in 2020, that was about 42 years ago. 42 years ago. Yeah, it was not that long ago. Native Americans have been forced to strip themselves of their culture, of their names, of their hair, of their headdresses, and forced to assimilate into white culture. There's photos of indigenous children before and after they started going to uh, Indian schools or Native American schools where they were forced to learn about white culture. And um, again, just forced to erase themselves to become white. And that is not okay. And so the fact that now all of us can just jump on this trend and use sage and not care is a little bit unsettling to me. It's unsettling to me because it e completely erases the fact that Native Americans who were the originators of that practice were not even able to use it until 40 years ago. People were jailed. People were even killed for practicing their religious faith. And that is so sad. 
And now places like Five Below sell it, among many other groceries. And that's really sad to me. That's really bum. That's a real big bummer. There are many other ways that people can cleanse themselves and the energy in the room that is ecologically and culturally responsible and respectful. We don't have to use sage. There's tons of other things that you can use. Um, there's so many other plants you can find. It's so easy. It's so easy to find other plants that have cleansing properties or to use incense. Hell, you can harvest your own sage and then you know that your sage isn't disrupting another person or tribe's ability to use it in their own practices, right? Spirituality is not a one size fits all. And so it, I really do urge us all to do our own research and um, find what we like that is responsible. Uh, but, and just do research before you start integrating spiritual practices into your own life. Personally, I don't smudge. Um, I use incense. I also make my own uh, herbal smoking cleansing sticks, right? So smoking sticks or using smoking as a smoke, herbal smoke as a way to cleanse your area, to cleanse yourself, to cleanse yourself spiritually or your space. That's also a completely valid thing to do. And no plants are being hurt. No tribes are being, you know, having their their access to their spirituality, to their ancestors, to their culture. Those access points are not disrupted for the people who, whose culture it is. When I first learned about Sage, I probably watched like one or two videos of black women using smudgy sticks. And I was like, sign me up, I like that. And that was the end. That was the end of my research. I have bought a decent amount of sage and palo santo in my life and i've even made some popular posts where i share myself using them it wasn't until i read more about the practice of smudging and the history of smudging and he seeing more uh native voices speaking out against the cultural appropriation and the 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 use of smudging amongst people who are not native that and my my anti-racist yoga training that i really started to look at myself i definitely i thought i was good i thought i was cruising i was like i don't do nothing like that i don't do any cultural appropriation and um it wasn't until i i really started to look at myself and my actions um if i want to be truly intentional with everything i do then i have to look and reflect at what i'm doing and i have to try my best to do the right thing that's all I can do. That's all anybody can do is to try their best. Five Below now sells smudge sticks like many other places. And are they harvesting it in a responsible way? Are they making sure that the way they're cultivating sage is okay and that, that it still will allow sage to continue to regrow? Or are they just taking the whole thing and not being ecolo ecologically responsible? Do they even know the significance of the practice or are they simply just hopping on to the trend? In addition to many big stores selling smudge and sage, a lot of people of color have also made brands and now sell it themselves and I can't support them. I support black people and black women, especially winning and being entrepreneurs, but I can't support them by buying their sage. I try to support them by maybe liking their page or maybe liking a photo if I even wanna go to that length, if I even wanna go to the length of liking their page, simply because I don't agree with the practice that they're doing. And I have to hold space for that inside myself. I have to hold space for, on the one hand, wanting to support all black women and all black people winning, but also knowing that that practice is not responsible for many people because most people who are using white sage are not natives. I just can't bring myself to financially support them and what they're doing. And there is definitely complex history in America uh, between Native Americans and Black slaves brought over. And so obviously there's lots of Black people that have Native uh, ancestry in them. And so I don't know if they are being called to do smudging because of ancestors or, you know, maybe it was them in the past live. Like maybe there's a specific reason that makes them feel really drawn to it. And so rather than me grilling them on 
are your vendors getting sage from a uh, uh, are your vendors getting sage in a responsible way? Do you even know where they're getting it? Uh, do you know if they're like, you know, planting more sage back after they take it? Rather than trying to like grill them and see every single practice and you know, it's just easier for me to just not support it completely rather than going down a rabbit hole and seeing if a company has ethical practices. Overharvestation of white sage is a very real concern by native tribes and many have spoken out against companies who use them and these companies don't listen to them. They don't, they keep on selling it. It's a complete erasure of what native tribes want and it's a complete just going over them. It really is disgusting because these companies don't care that native tribes are concerned that they're not going to be able to use white sage for themselves. They're more so concerned about making money. In a lot of places, a lot of vendors, you don't know if they're getting it from a responsible way. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of people who quite literally rape the earth to get white sage. There are people who go onto private property and snatch and grab is what it's called, snatching and grabbing sage to sell it. And that is incredibly disrespectful, not only to mother earth, but to the native American people. It's just disheartening. As for Palo Santo, I really don't use it mainly because of the endangeredness or the worry of it becoming endangered because of overharvestation. I am Dominican and I love the smell of Palo Santo. And even still, I don't buy it. If you see me using it, it's because I've had the same sage stick and the same Palo Santo stick for like over a year now. Um, and so because there's I just have so much left of the Palo Santo that I'm literally just like finishing it off. It's like when I went vegan in high school and cruelty free, I didn't throw away all of my leather belts that I had already purchased prior to being vegetarian or cruelty free. Um, I still kept those things around. I just didn't engage in buying more of it. Some natives might be totally okay with you using smudge. Other natives might not, and I'm sure if you are on Twitter or you know anything like that, you might have seen natives say, stop using sage if you're not native. They deserve to keep that practice sacred because it's really not necessary for us to do it. You know, it's really not necessary for non-natives to use smudging. But because this trend is so widespread, everyone wants to do it. Everyone wants to do it and many of us are also people of color and we know what it's like. We know what it's like to have a white capitalistic America take our culture and profit off of it. And so with this knowledge that I have, I have to be, I have to practice solidarity for our brothers and sisters because they deserve better and we must stand by them. We must. There needs to be solidarity. This is by no means a hateful video or me trying to criticize other people for buying sage or making a brand off of it because I bought it too. And I was very close to bringing smudge sticks onto my label La Bella Bruja too. But now I know better. And now if you stuck around this far, you might know a little bit more about the history of smudging and religious freedom in America. I hope you make an informed decision. I won't judge you either way you do. I won't take it personally either way. So thank you for listening to me today.